Why, hi there, I'm Ron Jacket, and it's time for another Dodcast post game show. And tonight, I don't know if I, I'll start again because it didn't tell me I was ready. Some first, whatever reason it tells me once you start one of these things that you're starting one, like I don't realize I'm hitting the start button. One, two, to why hi there i'm ron check it and it's time for the dotcast post game show for this july 15th 2017 it's a happy recap okay you can you can take your nails out of the off the recliner now put your phones down and all that because the nets honey hang on to win 10 to 7 it was a 10 0 lead in the bullpen. Nearly blew it, thanks to the not so good pitching of Austin Adams, who really got off to a bad start. And Trevor Gott eventually gave up a grand slam home run. But hey, it's a, a win is a win is a win. It doesn't matter how ugly, even if it looks like someone chipped all the teeth off the Mona Lisa, it's still a win. Let's look at some totals, shall we? The Nationals go to 54 and 36. They score 10 runs on 11 hits and one error. The Reds, seven hits or seven runs, nine hits and an error. They are now 39 and 51. Max Scherzer, you remember him. 11 and 5 now with the win. Louis Castillo, who has pitched two of his five starts in his major league career against the Nationals. Takes a loss, he goes to one and two, and Matt Amazing Grace, you knew I was going to work that in there somehow, didn't you? Picks up a second save in as many days. The hitting heroes. Tonight as I close the beeping window. Anthony Rendon. Tony Grand Slam four bags. Two home runs tonight, a two-run shot in the fourth off of Louis Castillo. And the Grand Slam off of Wood in the seventh did the job. He went two for, or three for three tonight. He walked twice and drove in six runs. Since the All-Star break, he's been to the plate 14 times and reached 12. That's pretty good, isn't it? Ryan Rayburn with the second of the year, a solo shot in the seventh. Uh, one double tonight. That was it. So out of the uh, 11 hits, one, two, three, only four were extra base hits. Daniel Murphy, two for four tonight, hitting 343, including his 30th double of the year. Rudders in scoring position. They went five for eight tonight, and they stranded at seven. So the offense, can't blame them for that. Can't blame the defense, except for Sanchez in the eighth inning. He was coming in, and that really threw off Austin Adams. All right, before I look at your chat, here is the pitching line. Scherzer, six innings. Again, he threw 62, 63 pitches in the first three innings and somehow only threw 95, three hits. He uncharacteristically walked four. He struck out 10, lowered his ERA to 201. Andy Romero struck out the side in the seventh on... 15 pitches, 10 of them for strikes. And Austin Adams couldn't retire anyone. The It just was too amped up. Sanchez with a hard error to start the inning, and then Adams allowed a hit and walk two would hit a batter. Just could not get anyone out. Could not find the strike zone. Just bad, bad, bad. Ali Perez, however, threw 17 pitches and got the side out without any further damage. Trevor got just a god-awful night. Five hits. Five runs all earned with a home run. Sierra is at 44. He didn't retire anybody before. Matt Grace comes in, 10 pitches, six strikes to retire the side. To his credit, the bases were empty. Well, it took three hours and 32 minutes to play. All right, let's go through... Let's go through it. Uh, let's see. Okay, Seth says, okay, the bullpen was not bad. Well, they did give up seven runs, Seth. They weren't good either. Only the guys they brought up sucked so over. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, per the experienced guys did, but seven runs, seven runs. Overall, a good win. Well, a win is a win is a win. I wouldn't call it necessarily good. You'll take it, but you shouldn't be sweating things out when you're with a 10-run lead. 
Nats fan 11 asks, Happy got got to feel a little scared with two T's and got ha ha ha. Give yourself a cookie, you win the internet. All right. Um, Nationals are trying to get Ryan Madsen and Sean Doolittle. That came out just before we started the game. Haven't heard anything about that. Um, Seth thinks that Robles is what does it. Ricky Keeler says that's way too much, and I would agree. I think that's where you use Andrew Stevenson. Um, Seth says, I have a weird feeling I may wake up to the news that the Nets have made a trade for Doolittle and Madsen after what happened tonight. No, I don't know if it happens this weekend or not. And um, I do think that will be the trade, but I don't know when it's going to be. Ricky says, don't think Rizzo is dealing Robles unless it's an elite closer. None of those guys are elite. Well, there is one pretty elite closer that's sitting out there right now in Toronto in Roberto Osuna, but there's no indication that the Blue Jays are going to trade him. Um, Judah Joker says, one thing that's worth noting, Ray Knight has done an excellent job with the color commentary filling in for FP. Um, but FP is more natural, cares back, talking about Ray, Ray is great. Good analysis the last two nights. I listen to the radio, you know, watch on TV. Um, that's just what I do. Seth says, at this point, I don't care just to get any help all the way possible, just to get it done there in a win now mode. Um, Again, I mean, they won the game, and so you really can't ding them too much. But this is what we've been talking about most of the year. How many times, you know, how many runs does the offense feel the need to score before any lead is safe? And a 10-run lead was not safe. They won. But last night they had a 5 nothing lead, and Grace got the save because the bases were loaded. Um, we've known. Nats are on a pace that sets us to win 97 games, but oh my goodness. I, I don't ask me how. I mean, it's it's all on the offense. And of course, the other big news today that we know now that Joe Ross is going to be having Tommy John surgery on Wednesday. He'll be out at least a year, if not through the end of 18. Um so that's that's just terrible news for them. So we'll see if they have to go through now and get a closer. I mean, uh, oh, I mean, uh, another starter. Uh, Ricky and I were talking about this before we went before the game started, and uh, I think they will try to cobble together a combination of Edwin Jackson and Eric Fetty. Um, as Seth asks if Eric will be up, um, at least to go through at least to, to get you through now. The, my concern is what happens with Tanner Roar. If he is the erratic pitcher that he has been the last few times out, I think they have no choice but to go out and get another pitcher. Um, if Roar can just go back to being average, then I think they'll go with Jackson and Fetty the rest of the year. You don't need a fifth starter in the playoffs, but you do need a fourth. And if if um, Roar can't figure it out, then um, then they're in some deep trouble. Seth says Nats should trade the entire bullpen for Zach Britton. I wouldn't go that far either. Uh, but the Nats are interested in Britton. Uh, but again, I think with anyone they have now, and as they continue to make these games much closer than they should. The price just keeps going up and up and up. And I would, unless the Madsen Doolittle deal happens, um, I don't see any way that uh, Robles stays. I think if you're go if you're going to go out there and look at that and say, okay, it's going to be Iglesias or Osuna or Britain or anyone, it, it, GMs are watching this, going, hmm, how much will you pay? And the Nats don't really have much of a choice. They have to get someone, and in fact, they have to get two. Which is why I think the Doolittle potential Doolittle Madsen thing makes sense, but again, they don't have a lot of leverage here. All right, on to the scoreboard. It's been an interesting night across Major League Baseball. The Yankees and Red Sox played 16 today, 16 games. All well, kind of felt like it. 16 innings. It took five hours and 50 minutes to play. Chris Sale got hung out to dry again. Yankees four, Red Sox one. 
game ran so long, it ran five hours and 50 minutes. It was the first of the doubleheader tonight on FS1. And the Texas-Kansas City game, which Texas won one nothing, finished before the Yankees and Red Sox ended. Isn't that interesting? Orioles losers tonight to Chicago, 10-3. to Jake Arrieta with a big return to the Charm City tonight for the Cubs. Uh, let's see. Uh, in the division... Atlanta beat Arizona 8-5. to Seth Lugo and the Mets shut down the Rockies tonight 9-3. to Lugo hit a homer. Cespedes was injured. In Miami, Cody Bellinger hit for the cycle for the Dodgers. He's the third to do it since the end of World War II for the club. Dodgers 7, Miami 1. And Milwaukee, they beat Philadelphia, so the Cubs... And Cardinals can gain no ground there. 3-2 Milwaukee, the final. Uh, I think everything else that has playoff implications and the National League is done for the night, which tells you just how late it is. Uh, let's see. Rick says, uh, probably waiting a few more weeks on Fed. He still needs his pitch count to build up. I think... And I think Rick will back me up on this. One of the big mistakes that the Nationals made was trying to – Fetty was a starter down in Harrisburg in A, and then they turned him into a reliever, and then they decided to bring him back in as a starter. So he was all stretched out, got used to going down and doing – to pitching those back-to-back -back games, and now has to be stretched back out again. So it'll be Jackson at least on Tuesday on Ross's next turn, the opener of the series against the Angels and – in Anaheim, and then after that, I think it depends on when they need a fifth starter again. Seth asked, do I think the little and Madsen trade will happen next week? Um, I think it happens sooner than later, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, I think if it happens, it happens early. I think once Quintana went from the White Sox to the Cubs, I think that opened up a flurry of things that will happen in short order. Judo Joker says, got to give Immaculate, Immaculate Max and Anthony Allbags credit tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Ren Dunn, with a, I believe that was his first career in slam, if I'm not mistaken. Six RBI night. He is just on fire. Probably has a little chip on his shoulder for not making the all-star team. Certainly enjoyed the break. And really right now is a straw that's stirring a drink. And he does it very quietly. And his defense is just as good as, as his offense. Um... You know, I don't think he's as good as Arenado, but Arenado is really one of those players on another planet. So, yeah, there are some good things tonight. I mean, Max looked good. It, someone pointed out during the game there was a strike three. There should have been a call strike three that was a walk on a full count pitch. And Scherzer, as you know, will will tell his coaches and, and Dusty Baker where to uh, how to physically do impossible things. And he sat there with the um, – and just kind of, he walked towards the ump, said something, and didn't protest. I mean, he really knows one, two, his intelligence is just so good that he knows when to tune that off. He can get away with telling his own players to do that. And did you see the hug that he gave Rayburn in the dugout after the home run? I mean, that was a genuine hug. That wasn't just you, bro. That wasn't just a bro, you know. Yeah, nice job. You know, that was a legitimate hug. Just like Harper gave the turn. Paul Assart a legitimate hug last night when he had a second home run. This team really does get along one or the other. Nice question. Why, and Nice haircut, thanks. And why didn't we not have the chat open during the Brian, Byron Kerr interview? Seth, his time was rather limited. And normally when we do interviews, we don't have it open. We're, we do them usually with phones. And so they're recorded. And so we did it the same, the same way. He only had a few minutes to, to talk. And Ricky and I had prepared some questions for him. It's actually the first interview that Ricky and I had done together in a while. And so that's why we didn't. It was just because he was still at his other job and he needed to get in and out. And we didn't clear it through him. So we do some of these live things. We're not trying to close people out at all. It's a case of um, the guest has agreed to come on and we only have a few minutes of time with a guest. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, let's go to the minor league scoreboard. 
Everything's a final now in the minors. That's how late it is. Syracuse loses to Pawtucket 7-4. A.J. Cole, 4-4 four four with a 6 0 ERA. I guess he's not getting called up in the near future, is he? Devers, the Red Sox new phenom, won a 4-4 four for four tonight. They were joking during the game that they could have sent him to Boston to finish that one. So Syracuse falls to 32-58. and 58. Uh, Ricky talked with the... Uh, Kevin Brown, the announcer for Syracuse, and that will go up early next week. Harrisburg beat Richmond tonight, 5-2 to two in the Eastern League. Sims with a win, 4-6 and six with a 3-5-7 ERA. Robinson picks up his third save. And Ronnie Reed with his ninth home run of the year. Potomac down Salem 3-2. Three, three runs, nine hits, no errors for Potomac. Salem, two runs, four hits, and an error. Williams goes to 1-1 one one with no ERA out of the pen. Sandburn with his first save. Uh, Auburn, ooh, right up here about three blocks from where I live. Beat Vermont 5-2 to two here in Burlington. Auburn got three in the 14th inning. Barnett with a win. He goes to 2-0. and oh. And Mary Glido with his, or Gildo, gets his third home run of the year. Gulf Coast League Astros down the Nats three to one. Collins takes a loss. He goes to zero and one. No home runs in there. And that takes care of the minor league scoreboard. Um, Seth says it did, and I'm still new to the channel. Yeah, we don't normally do them for the for the interviews because it's just too hard to do. I'm trying to coordinate all that. We want you to f focus on the guests, and just because we do them live doesn't those also get put into articles for later for later. So, so people don't necessarily see them live. He's now predicting that Tanner will be dominant tomorrow. I just want to see Tanner go out there and throw six solid innings. I, I don't really care if it's five to four at that point. I want to see some consistency. I want to see the roar of the pitch out of the pen before the break. I'm really worried about what Tanner Roark is going to do, and I really think it that will set up how how the second half goes and if they have to go out and get another starting pitcher along with the two relievers that they need. Whatever's going on, he needs to be able to be comfortable and has had to do it. And I just go out there and throw the game that he knows to do. I mean, this means that you can't throw seven innings or six, six innings, four of them good and two of them absolutely dreadful. So, you know, we I just want to see a consistent Tanner Roark. I don't need him to be dominant. I just need him to be consistent. Uh, remember, it's a four-game series, so if he does win tomorrow, if the team wins tomorrow, um, they'll have won the series, but it's not a sweep. We've not seen Blake trying, and we've not seen Joe Blanton. And we only saw Romero for 15 pitches tonight. I don't know what they'll do with Adams and Gott, who both were not good. Adams was not ready for the major leagues. If if a simple error threw him off that much, uh, he's not ready. He was nervous, but he wasn't ready. Judo says, cool fact, Max's batting average is 179. Uh, batting average against is 162. Eventually, essentially, every one of the majors is a worse hitter than him when facing him. Uh, that's pretty cool. You're absolutely right. Uh, are we able to pull off a three-player trade for Sonny Gray, Ryan Madison, and Sean Dulu? No. I want no part of Sonny Gray. I think Sonny Gray is damaged goods. He can go to Houston. He can go to Atlanta. I want no part of Sonny Gray. You're going to say not only goodbye to the competitive balance limit with that deal, but you're also going to be losing any mar any prospects in that deal. Um, Madison and Doolittle, I think, is a decent deal. I don't think it solves any long-term problems, but this is all about this year. Um, if if I had a choice in the matter, I, I would see what the Blue Jays wanted for Roberto Asuna. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I take Manson and do a little, no question about it. Sonny Gray, no, no, no. And Oakland's going to be able to pretty much get what they want for Gray because Gray is is the ideal fodder of a decent pitcher who can go to a, to, to a team um, 
that could go to a team that needs to win now, which I guess supposing is the Nationals, but there are so many teams in the American League who are in the wild card race, or even Atlanta, who's still, or the Mets, who are still in the wild card race, um, that they can offer more. Uh, no, I, we don't. Uh, if someone else suggested you, Darvish, and I just about banged my head yet. Um, n no, not yet. They need they need the closers. I, I want to see what Roark does before we start talking about starters. Rick says not going to give up on Adams yet. Has a good cut in the fastball control pressure. Control issues have always been a problem, but he has this stuff. The thing that concerned me, I mean, if he does this again, um, he needs to go. He did not find any consistency with the strike zone after the air. He had a 10-run lead. If, as Pete Kurzel said to me during the game, Ricky, if you can't if you can't use a rookie in a 10-run game, when are you going to be able to use him? And it, Adams beat himself tonight and got really beat himself but I, I you know no Seth Adams is not going to be in that deal though um uh, you got to be able to control your emotions on the hill and I know you got to start somewhere in that but there there was some you know I was delighted to see that that he wears his emotions on his sleeve but you got to be able to throw strikes you're a 10 run lead you know, we'll see. You know, his first time out is tough. First, that, that was really tough. I, I feel for him. This is not a cold thing saying no, no more. I feel for Austin Adams a great deal, but the margin for error is so little um, that let him go down and finish the year in Syracuse and bring him back up in September if that's the next case. You couldn't ask for a better situation to come in. And he couldn't get anybody out. And even when the Reds had pretty much sub for players, Votto was gone. They admitted with the white flag. Chris Lissy says to get Gray, Madsen, and Doolittle would cost too much. There are injury concerns. Um, injury concerns with the Gray. That's the other thing. I think the Oakland has just beat him like a rented mule over the years. You know, I think they've they've tried to showcase him, and finally we'll trade him. But you know, I I think a team that's desperate to make the playoffs is the one that that thing makes a grab for him, or Houston, which really has some pitching issues. Judo says, I honestly think that I I honestly think the bullpen has issues deeper than the lack of people or talent. I think there's some management issues with this team. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But I'm really unhappy with how this team is being. Run on a couple different levels. Uh, Matt Grace did look good. So did Ali Perez. Um, so, you know, there are some good things in the bullpen. But when it's, you know, it's the story of the curly, curly haired girl. When she was good, she was very, very good. And she, when she was bad, she was horrid. And I think that was the case. And Ricky says, I agree on your M's point, but I give him more of a chance than God. I, I agree. And I would agree with that. I, 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 I I would agree with it. I would agree with that. Um, I mean, again, God's coming in with an eight-run lead. You've got to throw strikes. You you get your chances are limited. Chris says I think the Indians may get Gray anyway. I think he goes to Houston because they need some pitching as well. Judo says we've never had a good solid closer. That's not true. Melanson was solid last year. Storm had some good years for you outside of the playoffs. And Papelbon wasn't all that terrible. You've not had a home, a consistent closer from year to year, but they've had good closers. Um, they just haven't had ideal situations for those closers. Uh, Melan Melanson was signed to be able to San Francisco, he's a West Coast guy, Judo. And so it was closer to home, and the Giants essentially offered more money up front and, more, and sooner option years. Remember, they had a better money deal in place for Kenley Jansen. And Jansen wanted to stay home. It happens. Not everyone wants to come play in your city. Seth asks, who remembers Rafael Soriano? All right, so that'll do it. So in the morning, we will have the latest on the possible deal between the Nationals and the Athletics. 
Drew will have a story on the Joe Ross injury and a little more on what that means. And we'll also chat with someone from the Hagerstown Suns about their season and another version of the Dodcast. That will be up for lunchtime. Oh, the Red Sox didn't get Todd Frazier, which tells you just how desperate the Red Sox are. All right, so for the rest of the staff of District on Deck, I'm Ron Jacket. I'll be with you tomorrow after the game, hopefully sometime before the, before dinner time, to go through game three of this four-game set. A final score again. It's the Nationals 10, the Reds 7. They've taken the, the Nats of 1-2. The first two since the break, and Anthony Rendon, Grand Slam, six RBIs tonight. So lots of so good stuff to go with that too. So for everyone from District on Deck, give us a like on Twitter, give this a video a like, and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, and of course, DistrictOnDeck.com. I'm Ron Juckett. Good night.